mate how are you i'm chilling you know i uh haven't been doing too much since we've been home but you know stoked to be coming back to australia that, like you know that was a it wasn't planned at all like i wanted to go i was like shit like how do we like how do we get to go to australia because like it's winter here right and it's just like australia is canada 2.0 so i'm like you know, I was looking for a way to do it. And then it's like now, you know, counterparts like we like we got a random call. We I think we were in like Washington, DC, and our manager like called us and he's like, Yeah, you want to go to Australia with architects? And I'm like, Yep. And he's like, Do you want to hear do you want to hear the offer? I'm like, Nope. Doesn't matter. <laughs> just just confirm it. So hey, I'm stoked. <clears throat> we're stoked. We're stoked you're coming down here. I mean I, I can't wait. I mean Summer, you get escape in the winter, and I'm I'm very curious. What is that background? Uh, so the background, <laughs> the background is a it's a K-pop group called Twice. They're they're my favorite. Um, yeah, I try to you know I try to I'm doing this in my bedroom. Uh, I've got all gray walls, no personality in here. Kind of looks like very serial killer vibe. So okay. I try to try to make it a little bit nicer. You know what I mean? But <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm like my uh, dungeon of of. See if I if I had cool crash. if I had cool stuff in my room like you do, <laughs> that that's one thing. But it's like it's four gray walls and like I don't know like uh like a like a space heater and like that's about it. So um so yeah, I try to you know I try to do the background replacement, make it a little bit make it a little bit cuter for sure. But. We do have, we are, that's the pod mic though, right? Is that the road pod mic? It is. Yep. Yep. We're, we're twinning right here. There you go. Same, Easy. Same thing. Yeah. Same yeah. Thing. Road, road sent me a bunch of stuff. It was, it was crazy. That is yeah. A- like I, I, I did the hard lore podcast and they, um, they were saying that, uh, the person that was running like the artist relations or whatever at road is a big fan of end. Um, nice. and, and they were like, Hey, do you want anything? And I was like, I'm good. Like I had like a, like a goofy, like, you know, $20, like Amazon mic for interviews and stuff. And I was, I was like, yeah, I don't know. Like I'll take a pair of headphones like these guys. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's about all I need. And then they sent me so much stuff, like the mic, the arm, like the interface, like everything. I was just like, oh, okay. Like, damn. All right. This is sick. But yeah, that's awesome. I'll I'll take it. I'll take it. (laughs) Well, uh, of course, uh, you know, you've, you've toured with architects before though, right? Yep. Yep. Like many times old friends. I think, uh, I think, okay. We had the, I think this will be the fifth time. I think we had the one time in Canada. It was like a cross Canada tour. The first time we met them when we were like just at a high school, then we did, um, Europe with them and uh every time i die bless the fall then we did um their other euro tour with them and while she sleeps and then we did the states run of that as well with stick to your guns and us and now this is like the fifth time we would have toured with architects yeah it's crazy that's awesome and they're good dudes too oh like yeah they're they're the best like i always like tell this story but it's like i'll never forget like watching you know like you know we're like one of four on a euro tour they you know they're like i don't know like we got nothing for you like just just stand in the hallway like you know no you don't have your own bathroom like get out of here and like you know a lot of the times like it was i don't know what happened but it would be like you know the ticket would say um doors at seven show at seven thirty, let's say and then they would like they would move it up to like doors at 7 30 so it'd be like we were supposed to go on at 7 30 but the doors were just opening and i remember like one day just like sam 
having like a meltdown, just being like, they flew here from Canada. Like you can't do this to them. Like the amount of times like Sam has stuck up for us, like all of them, honestly, like all of them have like thrown fits to make sure that like we're taken care of properly. And it's so sick. And like, that's, that's sort of like, you know, when we were, when that was happening and we were like 19, 20 and stuff, like, you know, early twenties, whatever, like it made me want to do that. You know what I mean? Because it's like, it doesn't matter if your band's doing well, like you got to take care of your tour and the people on it and stuff. And it's like, it, it was really sick to see because like, they didn't have to do that. They could have just been like, Oh, it sucks for you guys. And just like, <laughs> and just leave and not worry about it. But you know, it's really cool that they cared for sure. And I think they like, kind of handpicked us for the most part for most of the tours. So I love those guys. I, we owe them a lot for sure. They're, they're the best them, their crew, everybody like been good friends of ours since 2009, I think. So legends, legends. I can't, yeah, I mean, I can't the wait best. to see in Brisbane. It's going to be unreal, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm you know, stranger to Australia. I mean, you've, you've toured here a bunch of times. I think it was like one well, straight, straight from the path. North Lane, yep. every time I die, a um, yep. bunch of times. I mean, uh, which uh, was the most fun for you? Which which was the tour that sticks out? Um, I feel like I feel like I'm biased in this a little bit, but the last time we were there, um, I don't even remember what year it was, but when we were there with North Lane last, um, that was the most fun I've ever had on tour. Period, because we like obviously like we go over and stuff, and it's like you know, we're in like nice hotels and stuff. And it's like, we don't have to pay for it. It's like, you know, and like, we just, we get to play these crazy shows with thousands of kids and North Lane again, like there are like good friends of ours. Mm. Um, and there was, uh, so I think there was two Melbourne shows, but I want to say that like before those two shows, they were in the middle of the tour. There was three days off. And I remember like going to them and being like, Hey, do we have to get it? Like, so we got to get our own hotels for the three days off. And then, you know, then like for the Melbourne shows, we'll have them. And they're like, no, no, we, we just got them for you. And it's like, we're in hotels right in the center of downtown Melbourne. Like I had so much fun. Like obviously the shows were amazing, but like I had so much fun just like hanging with all my Australian friends. It was like, every morning, like I would hit a group chat and be like, I'm up. And then they would show up and just like, take me around. And I would just, you know, go around Melbourne and like Sydney too. Like we have so many friends in Sydney. Like it's, you know, it's, it's always, I don't know. I feel like we're, we haven't been there like too many times, but it's, it's weird. It's got this, like, it's like Canada 2.0 is the way I describe it to people. Like, if Canada had like perfect weather and better food and you know, it's, it was just better in all aspects. Like that's what Australia is. And I love it. So any excuse to get there, I'm down. You're just saying that mate. You're just saying, I, I, I promise you. Oh my God. I promise you. <laughs> I would move to Australia in a second, but you know, I don't want to do like farm work for citizenship. You know, I, I just can't look at me. I can't, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not built for that. But. <laughs> You could, I mean, we, we could work it out for you. We'd work. We could figure it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I can, I can yell for some citizenship, but you know, somebody's like, yeah, go water the crops. I'm like, I don't know how to fucking do you that. Just yell like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Bro, yeah, but <laughs> You could do that, but it'd work. There you go. That, that would at least make sense for sure. But, but yeah, I, I'm so stoked to come back. I love Australia. It's, it's the best. Well, I mean, you've also toured with our own uh, Justice for the Damned over in Europe as well. They yep. took those yep. boys out. Good guys. What's They're the best. Time? Like, like uh, the last, um, I think it was on the Every Time I Die tour that we did in Australia. So Chaz, the drummer, was driving us. And we were just like, dude, Chaz rocks. Like, this guy, like, this guy's so sick. And I remember, like, it was right around the time that, like, they started Justice. And he gave me like a shirt, like just a black shirt with like the scorpion on it. Like I still have it somewhere. I think it's at my parents' house. But when we were in Europe, like I told him about that and he was like, you kept it. Like you kept oh, the shirt. And I'm just like, of course I did. And we, we had so much fun with all of them. Also like they, um, I, I can't remember, like, I think they were recording, they were either recording with like Will or Randy and we were just there 
at the studio in Belleville, like doing something. And we were there for like a couple, like a week or so. And we just like, we became boys with them and we're just like hanging out in some random kitchen in Belleville, New Jersey every single night. So like when we did that tour, it was like, we didn't have to meet each other again. It was just like, so boys, what's good. Let's go. Like, you know, it was, it was awesome. So gotcha. Australia has got like a special place in my heart for sure. I, I love it there. And we love having you here, mate. More the better. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. To be fair, I haven't really played like a bad show in Australia ever. Even the like really small ones where I'm like, we'll see. They're always crazy. So I'm just like, all right, sure. Or it's like, oh, you know, like not a lot of people came tonight, but like the best bond me you'll ever have in the world is right next door. And I'm like, fair enough. That's 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 all it takes. That's good for me. I had a good day. So there's something about you guys when you play that just sends people bananas. You know, it could just be you true. Know, true. Just, and you just have to you have to get in there. Just throw and it. I and I I love it. I love it for sure. Like and that's you know, that's kind of like a it's a weird thing for us where I'm like, you know, I sometimes I forget that we have like a pretty extensive like catalog, yeah. you know, where it's like we're on album what like six, seven, like I don't even know anymore. Like I think Eulogy's the seventh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um but there's like so much material and I'm just like, you know, I never really know like how to, how to like gauge it and be like, oh, you know, like, are we doing good? Are we not? But it's like, even if there's not a lot of people at the show, like people still go crazy, you know? And like people will come up and talk to me after and tell me that, you know, our band has like changed their lives and stuff. And it's just like, oh, okay, this is like, this actually like, makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing. And like, I made the right call by being screamy guy, you know? So it, it worked out. It's such a great album too, man. That eulogy. The new one. Man. Oh, dude. It's. I, I think so. I think it is. Man. <laughs> man, it's such a banger of an album. And I think coming out of, you know, I probably get asked about it all the time, but the time frame and everything that happened in the world, you know, I guess, are you getting a lot of people connecting with it? because of that and are you finding that you know you're going out there and you find the songs are maybe taking on a different meaning different form for you yeah yeah like i i i think so i think that like um you know like the whole the whole like theme behind eulogy is you know like it's and you know when i started writing the lyrics and stuff like that like i never set out to make this like a theme or or mm. whatever but um it kind of all worked into like into one another to where it was kind of just like you know kind of like saying goodbye to stuff that's still around but like we all know that one day it won't be you know what i mean like whether it's like relationships or like friendships or you know my cat or you know the the band or like anything like that and i do think that i think that a lot of people can connect with it because covid was like a massive thing i mean like it still is for sure and it's like it was you know for at least for everybody like in the music world like for sure like any you know like obviously it, it affected everybody but you know you like you get what i'm saying where it's like you know me like us and everyone i'm friends with and all of my friends bands and stuff it's like we were just it was just put on hold and we're like yo are we ever coming back like this is crazy so i think that having that record come out and it's, you know, and it, and it literally was like a eulogy for, it's like, you know, no, we're not done. Like, hopefully one day we can come back and play more shows, but like, what if we can't, you know, like, am I okay with the outcome? So I think that, you know, a lot of people can relate to it in that regard too, because like it, it really did change a lot of people's lives and, you know, like mine, especially, and, you know, even like maybe not even directly, but just like, like, you know, just weird, like butterfly effect, like butterfly effect stuff to where it's like, you know, you can't do this anymore. So you can't do this anymore. So, and then it just kind of, I don't know. It just like, it just affected every single living person. And I think that like, you know, while I was writing it, that does come across. And I think that, you know, it, it like in a weird, like shitty way. It's like, I'm not, I'm not like stoked that 
um, people can relate to it as, as much as they do. But I also am in a weird way because I'm just like, all right, like, at least you got something, you know, like, it, like I'm going through the exact same thing that you are. Like, I'm not going to lie and be like, no, I got it figured out. Like every day I was just like, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to do this? Like, what if touring doesn't come back? Like, you know, what if I get COVID and die? Like, just like, it was crazy. So I think, you know, I think that everybody was kind of in the same sort of headspace when it came out. And I think because of that, the record did as well as it did, you know? So, man, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm stoked on it. Oh man, you should be. And it's, it's an incredible record. And that man, that song whispers of your death, um, which is a beautiful tribute to Kuma, man, you're, you're your cat thank you thank you it's just it it, that that for a lot of people is also super relatable i think and for sure for sure and (laughs) like yeah it's 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 such a beautifully written album from that perspective of of, of, on so many levels dude so i think yeah man yeah and i mean like you know i like even even when i wrote that song specifically it's like you know kuma was still like doing okay but you know, it was just kind of like, just like taking on like, you know, just the idea that like one day I'm going to have to deal with this like grief or yeah. loss or like something like that. You know what I mean? So, um, and in my mind, I was like, well, if I can write it while he's still around, it's like, like the music video, it's like, at least I can like play it for him, <laughs> you know? And like, he'll like, I'll play it and he'll like look at me and get pissed off and leave the room because it's noisy and shit. I'm like, yeah, fair. But you know, at least I can do something and just be like, all right, like, I don't want to wait too long to sort of, you know, get that tribute out there and stuff. So I think that, yeah, I think that that, you know, and like, don't get me wrong, like, obviously, that's not like the main reason why people, why I think the record did as well as it did. But I do think that like, you know, I think that there's this weird, like, there's this weird thing going on where people are just like, all right, like he lost his cat. So if we don't make his band big, like he's going to, he's going to lose it. Like he's going to end up in the mental hospital. So, and, and it, and it worked and I'm just like, okay, well, at least, you know, at least if something had to come of me losing my cat, like I'm glad it was that. And I'm glad it was a bunch of people that can relate to, like the same grief that I've, that I'm going through and everything like that. Like it makes it, you know, it makes it feel like less of, you know, I'm just up there singing songs about whatever and people kind of have to like pick it apart and do it. Whereas people can be like, Oh no, the song's about someone close to him dying. And like, I know how that feels. Yeah. So now I really care about this, you know? And yeah. And I think that that's like a big, it's like a big reason why, the record's doing as well as it like as it is because people can they feel like they can be vulnerable and be like all right you know i'm not like cool vocalist guy who's super serious and i have no feelings or whatever it's like no dude i'm just like you like i miss my cat you know what i mean like yeah. and people will come up to me and be like you know oh i relate to that song and it's about like a parent or like my partner or whatever and i'm just like dude i can't even imagine what would happen if it was like that i'm like not to discredit it, but I'm just like, you know, I'm talking about a cat. Like, yeah. You're talking, you're talking about like your parents, your loved ones, like, but you know, but to be fair, I will say, I mean, he was, he was my whole world. So the feeling is there. Yeah, me. absolutely, man. I definitely, I definitely feel that for sure. You know, I, I've been there too, mate. So I've, I've, yep. I feel you there, man. But it's uh, like, it's, it's the worst, but the fact that it's bringing every, like us, and every, like our fans closer together, it's like, maybe it's not the worst, you know? And that's, that's kind of what's keeping me going for sure. And that's, that's the important thing about music, man. And we've needed it over sure. the last yeah. two years, man, bringing people together and, and, and exactly. we're not yep. all in this big wide world. But, uh, but uh, yep. I think, I don't know. How I feel like everybody, everybody's had enough of being alone. Yes. We need to, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to feel a little bit closer to one another for sure. So. And uh, of course, uh, I've, I'm going to have to wrap up in a sec, but I just didn't want, I wanted to ask you real quick, uh, and 
I'm, I'm a big fan of end man. I love what you do there too, bro. Um, oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Especially that last split with cult leader. I mean, I don't know if you yep. can see there. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yep. Man, I, I love that band. So can we maybe see end down here? In June. A June. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We'll be there. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't even know when this is going to come out. Like, doesn't matter. I don't care. Fuck it. Uh, Counterparts and End are touring Japan together in yep. at the end of May. And then End is flying right from Australia to, or sorry, right from Japan to Australia. And we're doing a headline tour um, June, early June. So a couple shows, but we'll be there. So Man, man, we couldn't see you twice. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. Take all I'm going to show you twice, twice in one year is crazy, but I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it easy. <laughs> but uh, I'll send me your bank details. I'll just send you my whole. Uh, <laughs> sure. but, uh, all right. I'll take it. <laughs> Mate, we will see you very soon, of course, on this architect. Of course, tour. of course. It's going to be fucking incredible. Um, Can't wait. Uh, Mate, I hope you have the absolute best day and I will see you in Brisbane. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. I'll see you there. Be safe. <laughs>